Hello, this is James here from jameseager.com. How are you doing? I hope you're good. This is part four of how to prepare a backing track for Ableton Live. In the other three parts of this tutorial, you've seen how to prepare the clips um, so we can pull it into our master live set. What we're going to do today is take those clips and pull them in. You'll see here, this is our master live set, which ha has all the songs for the gig that we play. They're probably 30, 40, 50 plus songs in here. So what I'm going to do is show you how to uh, pull the clips in. If you're interested in discovering more about this Ableton Live playback system, I've created a free guide which you can download called the 10 Top Ableton Live Tips for Truly Flexible Backing Track Playback in 2015. This will take you through um, all the top tips you need to run this system. Please click on the link below and you can download this absolutely free. You might also notice I've done a bit of house cleaning with our YouTube channels too. We now only have two YouTube channels. The first one is for me personally, uh, so you can. this is where all the Ableton Live films are, probably where you're watching it now. And the second one is for the Metropolis films that we do. So you can actually go and see this playback in action, how we do these on a live gig, that kind of thing. And so if you want to follow Metropolis too, just jump across to Metropolis. YouTube forward slash Metropolis Live London. I'll also put another link to that below too. So the first thing we do is need to create some blank scenes for our new track. So select um, a blank scene in there and we will rename this Apple R and then type the name of the song in, Rather Be. I always put a space in at this point. And then Apple I to replicate and you'll see it will just add numbers after that so you can see what scene you're on. I always add about 15 scenes at this point. Then at this point add our tempo and time signature on the very first scene. So Apple R again and we will put 121 BPM. And 4-4. Four, four. The next thing is to drag in our, the clips that we want to use. So let's go over to our file manager over here. And then into the song clips folder we made. And then down to rather be video. And open that out. And then you can see all the tracks that we've used here. Um, the reason that I got you to export all of them is because you can now choose exactly what tracks you want to use. You can add the ones you want in now or you could add them at a later date. So I think the ones I want to use here, I want to use the strings. So drag in the strings like so. And I'm going to uh, put those on keyboards one over here. Um, I'm going to also bring in the backing vocals. I'm also going to bring in the percussion as well. Then the last one, and very important, is I'm going to bring in our counts track as well, because this is what the follow plugin will use to trigger all the next scenes. And you will also see it's named up from the work we did in the previous uh, tutorial as well. I'm also going to color the master scenes as well now. I'm going to keep the yellow color. Then the next thing we're going to do is we need a metronome in there. I always use an external metronome channel here because I find it's got much, much more um, routing flexibility rather than the internal one that comes with Ableton. So I'm just going to select, copy a bunch of scenes from a previous track. Something like that will do. Apple C, and then into there. And you just need one more at the end. And then just for belt and braces, I always put a manual follow Ableton follow action on the very first count scene because we never want this to repeat. Very straightforward to do. Select the first scene. Okay. And then all we do is um, right click on it and go to select all slots in scene. Then we go down to our follow actions here. And we want to put a follow action on after here. So it always goes after two bars. So there's two bars there. And then after two bars, we want it to go to the next uh, next set of clips. Now our clips are ready. At this point, I normally copy and paste it into where I want them to the set. I'll just show you how to do this. So literally copy scenes like that on the right hand master uh, scene list and go Apple X or Command X. That will delete them. And then I think we're going to do it further somewhere near the start of the set 
and I'm going to put it in there just before don't you worry child select don't you worry child Apple V and you can see those scenes are copied in there now this is the point where we want to set our follow actions um, so all we really want to do with this actually is on the last scene we wanted to stop the internal metronome and then we want it to queue up the next track I'll show you how this works so take our count queue like so because this is where the follow plugin is working go into our clip envelopes and the and the follow actions we want to use so we select follow action there and we are going to take this up to Q next and then we're going to add another follow action as well here and this is on the transport so at the end it stops it stop transport on I'll demonstrate how this works to you now I'm going to play it from the start one two one two three four Two, next three, scene is triggered four. and it will go on through the track like this I'm going to just play you the last couple of choruses I'll show you the automation that we put on in follow just by selecting that track so we'll play the last two choruses like so next scene will trigger at the end of this eight And then we can see it's changed to Q next and the transport light is on. And then you can see the next track is all queued up and ready to go so all I have to do is hit the go button on the floor like so and we can go into the next track. One, two, one, two, three, four. And that's how I basically run the whole set on one using one foot pedal on the um, on the floor. It makes things greatly simpler. So, so the last thing I do now, just as a bit of a belt and braces, is do a collect all and save. Um, so we will go up to the top here and collect all and save, and it will just bring in any media which doesn't happen to be in the live set already, like so. It's a good thing to do every so often. Another question I've had from people uh, on here is how do I actually navigate around the set? If I need to jump songs or anything like that, I've actually found that the simplest way to do this is to use the trackpad on the laptop. I've got it sitting on a quick lock stand on the gig, so when I'm standing up playing the bass, it's at arm height. And then I either use the down and up arrows, like so. I'm actually going up and down on the keyboard. You can do that very precisely. But if I need to actually fly around the set, I just use the trackpad and the color coding really helps. I always know roughly where every tune is. One thing I do with the guys set list um, is we only ever go forward in the set. That's another great tip. So just to go over what we've done today, we've named the scenes. We've added the tempo and the time signatures. We've dragged in the clips from the file manager. We've colored the scenes. We've copied in the metronome clicks. Um, we've copied and pasted the song as a whole into the right place in the set and we've set our follow actions. Now we're ready to do the gig. So thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this, I'd love it if you could like or share. Uh, please do comment below. You're always welcome to email me. Just go and visit jameseager.com. If you'd like the free guide, the 10 top Ableton Live tips for truly flexible backing track playback in 2015, just um, click on the link below there. We That will take you to where you can download that. Any comments or feedback, um, I would love to hear from you. Um, do check out jameseager.com. Many thanks. Bye-bye.